Hello guys, you are welcome back to Structures Pro. In our last class, we did the uh, part footing design with RCDC. So today we'll be doing, uh, we'll be discussing the, the output report. Let's discuss it line after line. And, and I believe that we are going to learn some few things from this. Let us go, um, go to reports. Okay, we start from, uh, pressure check for all load combination okay see for the footing number fc1 column number c1 design code is this bsen european norm 1992 2004 depth of uh, founding layer 1.2 density of soil 18 kiloton per meter cube soil bearing capacity of one uh, 150 kiloton per meter square permissible soil bearing capacity increase for eq okay you have design cross section okay Area of footing we have L times B. Mm. So without considering effect of water table, you want to calculate the the footing self weight is this the soil weight is that the total is 16.3. Considering effect of water table, so when the water table is depending on the level of the water table, if the level of, of water table is above the the footing depth of course there will be a case of up thrust thereby reducing the weight of the structure so this will definitely be higher when you consider water table especially when the water table is above the footing depth so soil weight is this now that's the same thing then uh, the the footing self weight footing self weight has reduced here so it's less than this because the water has due to up thrust it has reduced the so weight of water submerged zero total weight is equal to this so this as we reduce is, is less than this one as the effect of up thrust when you consider water level okay, you see the maximum p1 the maximum pressure p2 minimum pressure all this calculations done it's just a good calculation sheet so soil pressure check table for column number one and uh, footing number one you have uh, our load cases a load combination analysis so you have a uh, load from the load combination maximum load from this combination 10 you have this combination 11 you have this and remember our load combination came from this wonderful template which is up for your grab and um, the link is in the description just click the link get it for a token it's very 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 cheap for now uh, I have a limited time for before I can increase it to the normal price so I I urge you to do uh, to come and uh, get your own immediately uh, as soon as possible so you see all these other load commission we have done there you have a commission number 10 11 12 13 14 15 25 26 27 we have up to um 29 load combinations in this particular um design so and you can see where i we have critical loads that the software is con has considered is all these ones that are here so the importance of having multiple load combination so your design need to have multiple load combination to take care of any circumstances or foreseen circumstances that might cause harm to your structure in the future so this is the 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 the, the, the multiple con uh, combinations i have put together you know for if you have this you have no issue whenever you are doing um, concrete design just come here and get the factors and the the load the load combination and um, pattern so that's that. Okay, so you see, so for load combination 15, if it is from here, 
we have our maximum soil bearing pressure my maximum soil pressure the, the the pressure on our soil is high at this load commission number 15 so for, for example if you have already done a uh, load commission 1 to, to 10 in your design and you have not considered this number 15 there is no way you would have gotten a high value at this point and you would have done uh, for example if you are using um, a, a soil bearing capacity of 100 or maybe 120 yes 120 and your load combination is, is the, the highest load combination you have your your analysis is maybe ends at 13 or 12 you have 117 there of course you you say it has passed but without considering this 15 the load combination number 15 you wouldn't have known that you have a higher value the higher pressure on your soil and your soil capacity assuming is 120 we fail in this case so that's why you need to get multiple load combination so these are folks that are doing multiple load combination we are not uh, we are not uh, we are not fools we know what we are doing actually it is a uh, it is standard so I'll, I'll urge you to get this get this it adds value to your profession and makes you you know uh, stand the better chance to analyze your structure the to analyze your structure well yes so so this is a uh, the maximum 131 and it is uh, passing because our our assumed soil pressure is 150 you can see so the minimum is what is 50 see. so that's that the uh, bearing pressure check so stability check table um, for factor of safety of for buoyancy you have 39 which is far 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 bigger than 1.5 factor of safety for sliding you have uh, 72 according to load cases you have load case 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 6 16 17 18 you have 10 11 12 13 14 15 so considering all these critical load cases our our buoyancy sliding check and overturning check in B direction and L direction, that is X and Y direction, passed very well. Yes, so let us go to crack width check. If you come to crack width check, um, you have a size of a foundation, you have, you have material, you have location, and um, the rest of them. So, of course, you know, we the, the, the allowable crack width we specified in our design is 0.3 so these are the crack which we have after uh, all these stress all, after all these stresses we have stress in bar we have here 30.21 so what the crack is 0.03 so none of these is up to 0.3 if you check it if you look at it closely you see none of them is 0.3 they are 0 0.0 0 0.0 0 0.0 0 0.0 0 .0, everywhere 0 0.0 so i see our that is how to read your your output report you don't just uh, do garbage in garbage out when you finish your design you look at what your report is read your report by yourself and you know, diagnose it check it very well sometimes you might get unusual output and you have to question that yes yeah, so my 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 crack width are okay nothing is failing here it's very 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 okay then we can go to detailed uh, design calculations design calculations let me just pick one footing footing number one and uh, we check for that one okay this one have all the other ones we have checked is a, a comprehensive output yeah you have grid of concrete this are my input 2530 Partial factor for concrete 1.5, partial factor for 1.2, steel grade 4,000, uh, 4, 410, sorry, yeah, clear cover 50, uh, bedman depth 1.2, water level 1 meter, and density of soil, these ones we have seen in, at the other side, yeah, do check for maximum soil pressure, you see. 
So our allowable pressure is 150. The maximum soil pressure, as we saw the other side, is 131. So the two of them are speaking the same thing. So against 150. So our our, our bearing pressure check passed. Check for minimum soil pressure. Here we get uh, we get 50. Yes, which is greater than zero. Minimum pressure greater than zero. Critical load combination for Okay, you see the load combination they use for this one, where I use the a one to multiply self weight, which is my dead load number one plus um, parapet load number two plus um, beam load dead load number three plus load um, column load dead load number four. This one, this are combination of all the dead loads. That's what it considered critical for check for buoyancy. For buoyancy is is uh, when you don't have much load on the structure. I mean, you just finished framing the work, and the water level like maybe flooding uh, comes in, and you know the building does not have any life load on it. That's the critical for buoyancy. It does not have much weight, so the water will tend to pull it up, you know, and it can even float. No, but when you have a uh, a life load on it that's not the critical the critical uh, uh, the critical uh, time for such a uh, load combination so the critical time for this particular one is is when it is only the self weight of the structure uh, and that's what this load combination is talking about the load combination number 10 if you that's the first load combination if you, if you come here you see the first load combination only the dead load without including the life load and the software actually recognizes it as the critical for buoyancy. You see the importance of this this uh, load combination template. So uh, I don't think I need to explain uh, anything more for you to understand that uh, that load combination template is very necessary for your use. So now this one is just the combination of all the dead load. Yeah, that's for that and what we have is 39 points so the the self weight of the structure considering the water level can withstand buoyancy that's the meaning you have 30 39 point 39 which is far greater than 1.4 or if you if it is 1.5 you are using as factor of safety is still okay it's okay now so we have check for sliding the same thing you have a First resistance sliding is is uh, 26 according to the calculation. Factor of safety have, uh, available for sliding. Uh, you have to res uh, resisting force over sliding force to give you this. So the sliding force is uh, okay. Let me explain to you how this. Uh, this force is being calculated. Okay, now see factor of safety 1.5. We have a uh, okay a resultant sliding force. This is a force trying to make the structure slide, trying to make our structure slide is 2.33 kilonewton. The resultant sliding force is this. So now downward force is giving us 67.07. This is uh, the self weight of the structure you get so the net downward force is when you subtract this upward water force because the water going the weight of water going coming up has been calculated to be 1.47 so subtract subtract 67.07 minus the weight of water going up you have 65.63 my one is giving me 62 which is uh, the same thing so now force resistance sliding force resistance sliding we have to now consider the friction coefficient multiply it by this six and to get 26.25 yeah so when you consider the friction coefficient of the friction effect it brings our resisting force down to 26.25.
So this resisting force is what is trying to stabilize our structure, the self weight of the structure that is trying to uh, stabilize our structure, that is trying to prevent the sliding force from pulling it down. So now to get our factor of safety available, which we compare to 1.5, we divide the resisting force by sliding force. So the resisting force now is 26. So let's get the calculator. Say 26.25 divide by sliding force the sliding force is the resultant sliding force resultant sliding force which is 2.33 so i'll divide that va that value with 2.33 and that will give me 11.266 which is approximately 11.27 so, and this 11.2 7 is greater than 1.5 by 4. So this is very, very okay. This is why you should learn this software. It's very good for you. Even if you are doing a private project, it, it runs it with ease. This is calculation sheet. This is what some persons will do manually and they will still get the same thing. But with, with software like this, uh, within a few minutes, you just are done. Yeah. So the only thing that will take your time when you are using software is when you when you don't know your load, you know, the primary load to apply to a structure, a particular structure. And that is the, the need for you to get accumulate templates. Accumulate templates, I'm telling you, is very necessary. I have a lot of them, which whenever I want to design a particular thing, I get a particular template that suits it and I don't struggle. I just, within minutes, I'm done. Yeah. So, design for bending, critical analysis load combination for that is 16. Yeah. Load condition number 16. When uh, I, you see that I used 0 0.9 to multiply self with 0 0.9 to multiply all those things, these are the things I did. Even the wind load in x direction, life load is there in the combination. So the load combination is very, very paramount, and the, the, the software recognizes it in that order. So I urge you to do the needful, get the template for yourself, and uh, just check the link in the description and you know, grab your own. Okay, we we'll end here. This is just a brief discussion of the output reports, and I, I believe you must have learned one or two. Thank you. And if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, share my content with your friends and well wishers and your colleagues in the office. Thank you as you do that.